First, he locked up the center. Then, he shut down all the queenside activity of his opponent. Then, he made all his opponent's pieces useless and totally inactive, making his opponent utterly frustrated and unable to do anything in the game. And after that, he started a deadly kingside attack which Black was unable to survive. Yes, this is how brutal can Anatoly Karpov be. So let's learn how to attack from this classic game played between world champion Anatoly Karpov and Wolfgang Unziker. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, rook to e1, b5, bishop b3, d6, c3, castles, h3, knight a5, bishop c2, c5, d4. All these are pretty standard opening moves. Queen to c7 and now knight b to d2. Knight moves to c6 and now d5. Karpov has already locked the center and is now attacking the black knight. The knight moved to d8 and now a4. Karpov is now trying to shut down all the queenside activity of Wolfgang. Pawn takes pawn would be a mistake because that will simply give an advantageous position to Karpov. With this semi-open file for this rook, a good place for this bishop to control this diagonal. This bishop can jump on this square and control both of these diagonals over here. So overall white's pieces would be in a very good position and black's pieces already look crumpled up over here. So let's go back. Therefore Wolfgang did not capture this pawn and instead played rook to b8. So pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. The file is wide open for this a rook and now b4 by Karpov. Again Wolf cannot capture this pawn because after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight to d7 and knight to b3, White's knight will have a very good outpost on the a5 square. White's other pieces can get a very good square to develop targeting this pawn. As you can see, the bishop is already targeting this pawn. Bishop to d7 protecting this pawn. Bishop e3, knight c4, rook c1, pinning the knight. And this position already looks so much better for Karpov since he has got initiative in the game. So let's go back. Therefore, capturing the pawn is not a good idea. So Wolf can play knight to b7, adding an extra defense to this pawn and now knight to f1. The idea is to get this knight on the king side of the board as well as clearing up this diagonal for this dark squared bishop. Bishop to d7 and now bishop to e3. Rook a8, challenging the open a file. But Karpov isn't interested in trading pieces because if he just trades over here, then Wolfgang's rook will get this a file. So it doesn't make sense. Therefore, Karpov played queen to d2. The idea is to connect rooks over here and to maintain his control of the a file. Rook f to c8 and now bishop to d3, keeping an eye on this pawn. g6 by Wolfgang. His dark squared bishop is just trapped behind his own pieces over here. So he's planning to get it on the g7 square where it can add valuable defense to black's king as well as in some lines if this diagonal opens up then his bishop would prove to be a very strong piece. Knight to g3, placing the knight on the black's king side and now bishop to f8. Rook a2, Karpov is planning to double up on this a file and c4 by Wolfgang, attacking white's bishop. So the bishop here moved to the b1 square, which is not a very great move. You know what a better move would have been? Well, the better move here would have been to play bishop to e2. Why? Because that way you can jump on this side of the board, helping your pieces to plan an attack on black's king. Also by staying on the same diagonal, you are keeping an eye on all these black spawns. So bishop to e2 is a far better move, but Karpov chose to play bishop b1. He realized that this move wasn't great and in the later part of the game, it took this bishop back over here because this move is also blocking the path of this rook to get on the a1 square. So bishop b1 by Karpov and queen to d8 by Wolfgang. And now here Karpov played a very creative move and that is bishop to a7. Well, what's the idea? Now, since he's planning to double up his rook on the a file, he doesn't want his rooks to get exchanged. So by playing bishop to a7, he's completely shutting down this file for this rook over here. Isn't that an innovative move? That's the brilliance of Karpov. Knight e8, bishop c2, Karpov corrected his last mistake, got his bishop out from this first rank. And now knight to c7, rook e to a1. Karpov has already formed a strong battery on the a file. He's totally dominating this a file. And now queen to e7 and now bishop to b1. It's a mistake because it's just wasting time doing nothing much over here. So bishop to e8 by the opponent and knight e2, knight d8, knight h2, now bishop to g7, f4. And here we have reached a very interesting situation on the board. Just look at this position on the board. 
Karpov's rooks are totally dominating this file. His knights and queen are ready to jump on the king's side and launch a deadly attack against Black's king. Karpov has already shut off the center as well as any counter activity on Black's queen side. Look at Black's pieces. This rook is doing nothing over here by sitting here. Cannot come to this square as well. This rook also can't move here. Also, he's controlling nothing over here. These knights don't have any squares to move. They are just stuck behind their own pieces. That's so sad. Look at this poor knight. Can't go anywhere. Where should he go? He's just locked up in his own home. Look at this bishop. I pity on him. Doesn't have any place to go. Look at this bishop. He's developed behind his own pawn chain. And the only square that he can go to is this. But for that, he needs the support of his queen because currently our queen is doing a good job of controlling this diagonal. So all of Black's army are so crumpled up in their own position that they not only lack space but also any creative idea to progress from here onwards. So since Black's position is already miserable now, Karpov here decides to start a deadly attack on Black's king. Because the center is locked up, Karpov has already shut down all the queenside activity. So now it's good time to trouble this Black king. So he starts the attack with f4 and Wolfgang here replies with f6. Oh, not a great move. So a piece of advice to everyone. So when your pieces do not have any space to move, good thing to do is to start exchanging pawns and pieces so that you get more room for your pieces. So a better move over here is to play pawn takes pawn. After knight takes pawn, you can now play f6. But Anzika did not exchange pawns and directly played f6 in the game, which is not the correct move. Why? Because that allowed Karpau to make Black's life miserable with the move f5. Why is this move so great? Because Karpov has got a very strong hole which is the e6 square in the opponent's territory. And instead of exchanging this pawns over here, Anzikar made a bad move. He played g5. What was he thinking? Probably he was thinking, I don't want to exchange one of my pawns, which is a key pawn in the defense of Black's king side. So he played g5. But hey, that move just gave Karpov a very strong control of this e6 square as well as some control of this g6 square as well. And this is going to prove deadly in the coming moves. Bishop to c2. Well, what is the idea? Now, after the move g5, if you see this light squared bishop in the Black's army, has got a chance to get alive in the game. He can anytime come on the h5 square and start creating some problem in white's territory. So Karpov played bishop to c2 in order to exchange this black's light squared bishop with Karpov's light squared bishop. The idea is to remove the only active piece in the black's army, get off the board. So bishop f7, knight g3, knight b7, bishop to d1, h6, and now bishop to h5, challenging this bishop over here. Queen to e8 because Anzika definitely doesn't want to get rid of his only piece in the army which is trying to be active. So queen e8 just support this bishop and also gets a queen on this diagonal. Queen to d1, Karpov is supporting his bishop now with two of his pieces and knight to d8, rook to a3, king f8, Anzika doesn't have much to play, rook 1 to a2, Karpov is just slowly improving the position of his pieces one by one. King to g8 and now Karpov comes up with a brilliant tactical move, knight to g4. So is Karpov giving a free piece to his opponent? Well, no. Karpov has not only improved the position of his knight, but he has played a tactical move over here. He has set up a cute little trap for his opponent. So if Anzikar falls into the trap and captures the free bishop, then Karpov can capture the bishop back with his knight. And if queen takes knight, then it would be a big mistake because Karpov can now play knight takes pawn check, forking the royal couple. So he would play bishop takes knight and now the queen is gone. So let's go back. Therefore, the move knight to g5 is such a brilliant move because not only it is improving the position of the knight, but it has also laid a tactical trap for his opponent. Obviously, Anzikar was smart. He didn't fell for this trap. He rather played king to f8 and now knight to e3 by Karpov, king g8, bishop takes f7 check, knight takes f7, queen to h5. See, Karpov's queen has already entered black's king side. Knight goes to d8, offering an exchange of queens. And instead of directly exchanging here, Karpov played a very cute move, queen to g6. Well, what's the idea? 
Well, if queen takes queen, then pawn takes queen, and this pawn would have entered deep into the opponent's position, controlling these two key squares in front of the king. And after bishop f8, knight to h5, making sure that the king doesn't come over here and try to attack. So knight to h5 just solves that problem beautifully. And here, Karpa would have a very dominating position on the board. So let's go back. Therefore, Queen to g6 is a very good move by Karpov. So Anzika didn't take back the queen. He rather played queen to f8. Because actually, if you look at his opponent's game, he doesn't have anything much to do. And now here, Karpov played knight to h5, double attacking this bishop over here. And here, at this point of time, Anzika resigned from the game. Why? Because if he plays queen takes queen, then pawn takes queen. And after knight to b7, knight to f5, double attacking this bishop over here. And the bishop moves back and if you see, Karpov has two strong knights in the black king side territory. This strong pawn over here which nobody can capture. His rooks are stuck at the back rank. Can't do much over here. These knights don't have good places to go or do any counter activity. So it's just a matter of time that Karpov will keep on improving his position slowly and steadily and will go on winning this game. Like this video and subscribe to my channel to watch more such amazing games. And now let's head on to the question of the day. So here is a very interesting situation on the board. Everything looks very normal, but here it is white's turn. And if white finds the correct move, then he can finish off black's game in just three moves. So can you find the winning moves for white? Let me know your answers in the comments box and I'll see you in the next video.